Hey, we're in chasing and welcome to another Zombie Side unboxing. This is for Zombie Side Invaders Comic Book Extras Volume Two. Um, so of course we're going to get through all the minis and all that fun stuff. We also have the comic book um, playing Prometheus, and this is number two in the series. I don't know if it's a direct continuation. I didn't. I missed out on series one. Um, I haven't picked up. Went back and tried to pick it up second hand yet. Um, so I don't know if this is a direct sequel or if it's just number two in the zombie side lineup. It might not be. I doubt it's a direct continuation just because I think these are all brand new characters. Um, so uh, just a heads up spoilers alert. Um, being anyone that's in the comic books, you might not want spoilers for what might be in the comic book. If you're buying this more for the comic book or you really wanted to read it and see what was in it. Uh, it's just by looking at the miniatures and seeing who the characters are, who the abominations are, um, looking at the story mission, things like that might spoil part of the comic book because they're kind of tied together. Um, I mean, it's not going to be direct, exact direct say this, but it might be like, oh, this character does this or this is who the boss is. Um, and it might spoil the end of the book for you if there's a twist or a reveal or something like that. I have not read the book, so I can't. Confirm or deny that, I just want to give a heads up that if you don't want any spoilers for the comic book, go read the comic book first, and you can always come back and check this stuff out first. Um, that being said, uh, let's take a quick look in there. I don't want to uh, go over everything. Just and also heads up is it might have graphic the images, um, just because you are fighting alien, uh, grotesque zombies and stuff. Um, yeah, but it's a pretty interesting, some pretty good artwork. Um, it's kind of neat to see some of the characters. Ooh. Um, luckily my camera is panned up right where it is because there is some gore right below where my camera is. But it's also very interesting to see some of these characters I do recognize from the previous series, which is really fun. Uh, so this would definitely be interesting to read. Hey, look, there's some more gore there. Um, cool. We're going to get into that. Uh, is there a dossier thing in the back? There wasn't some of the other ones. Oh, yeah. I love this. So they have sketchbooks in the back, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't, again, I don't want to go through too much of that because there might be more stuff. Um, but that's definitely cool there. All right. So, again, with spoilers, we're going to look at the mission. Um, so, again, this is your last spoiler warning uh, before we get into anything else. So, in this, you're going to need Zombie Side Invader and the extra. You need the re traditional invader because you need the map tiles. Um, so if you have Black Ops, um, that's not the right books for it. Um, and Black Ops, not Black Ops, was it the second one? That was the mini one. Uh, Dark Side, yeah. So if you just have Dark Side, uh, which is like the second standalone set, it won't work with this scenario because you don't have the correct map tiles. Um, but yeah, there's some interesting stuff in here. So, again, this is big spoilers. Is we have Shala must transform into an abomination. Um, and then you must eliminate the other butcher. So it's kind of neat. You have to actually play through. You can get some different stuff. Someone gets um, this when they get the prototype weapon. You might unlock your spawn points. Get the blue and white objective. She turns into a... Um, when she has both, she turns into an abomination. Who actually has some special attacks. She did not perform any action other than move an angry attack. Um, so it costs zero, zero range, four dice, four, four plus accuracy, but does two damage. Um, and then also you have to eliminate the Dim Butcher Abomination with the Shiloh Abomination. Otherwise, it just keeps respawning. So that's kind of an interesting um, notion for this. And then here's the map. Get some of these different spawn points, the active molds, serve bot, um, workers, hunter. Um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty interesting there. I love that we get an extra mission with that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and hop in this. Now, we're going to start off a little bit different than normal because, unfortunately, um, during shipment of my game, war, what, for whatever reason, you know, you never know why these things happen, um, my Yuko card, uh, was not... In the set. Um, so I took a picture of an online video. Um, to find, and I'm going to tell you what. Being that this is still a fairly recent thing. It was hard to find a picture of this. Sometimes people post pictures on Board Game Geek. 
of the various cards and the things like that, which is very helpful. Um, sometimes uh, Simon's website or Guillotine Games, who also works with uh, does the zombie side so we'll post the updated stuff this is might be too new for them to have done that um yo so it took me a long time to find finally find somebody that actually showed this and this is one reason why i love doing my videos where i show off all the cards i show i talk about them a little bit um i'm sure some people wish i would talk less and just show off the cards but that's here nor there that's not what i, I want to do um but yeah, most people do unboxings for these games. They just pull them up. They look at, oh, here's a handful of cards. They set them off to the side and they show off the miniatures. That's the big thing. Um, so I do want to just shout, do a shout out here to Pug and Play. Um, there's the uh, there's a Facebook link. You look him up on YouTube though. Um, but I believe this is uh, uh, Bonjour. So this is uh, a French creator. I do not speak French. I could not understand. I couldn't understand because I didn't watch any of the video enough to do it um but yeah i just want to give a shout out because this is the only other only person out of i think i checked about five videos of different unboxings to see if anyone at least held the card up for a split second so i could at least see what this stuff on her card said and nobody did everyone had them they had the cards down here they maybe showed the top of them most of them didn't even unwrap the packs um so I just, yeah i want to give a shout out to this other creator so thank you for somebody else that does stuff like this uh, the downside is they had their camera so far back. Um, and again, if, if I could speak French, I might have understood. Maybe he read the abilities off quick. But since I can't, I had to like turn my camera into, or turn my YouTube channel into 1080 and zoom way in to hope to see this. So we're going to go over her stuff. Um, we're going to go over the cards and I'll look at the miniatures so I can put my phone away. Uh, but she is a soldier. She has three health. Um, but she starts with Escalation Melee. So the Escalation ability, of course, means every time she does a melee attack without interrupting, without moving, doing another action, whatever, she gets an extra die roll. So the first time she'll get, get nothing, next time she'll get one die roll, then two, then three. So as you gain more action throughout the game, sometimes it's super helpful. Um, then in yellow, we always have plus one action. Um, that is uh, Zombie Side 101 right there. Um, in orange, we have Bloodlust Melee and Tactician. Um, so, Bloodlust Melee. Um, so, Survivor can just kill once during each of their turns. Spend one action up to two zones containing at least one Xeno. Then they gain one free action of the specified type for melee. Um, so, this lets you get an extra movement and the attack all in one action. But it has to move into a zone with the zombies. Um, but she's going to be probably be doing that anyhow. So basically you can spend one to get, get closer to guys, get a free attack, and then use that, bounce that off of Escalation. Um, Tactician will let her uh, resolve any time during the player's phase before or after any other survivors. Several survivors benefit um, from the same steal. Players choose their turn order. Um, so yeah, basically if she can go, she can jump ahead in line. So if she's player three and you're playing player one, player two, player three, player four, all of a sudden it's like, oh no, she left off and there's a group of zombies by her or, I, or like next to another guy. Instead of having her wait around, um, you could have her jump to the head of the line, maybe try and take out a bunch of them guys first, finish them off. Then the other player, player one and player two could go ahead and walk through that area. So that's a really fun ability to have. Um, in red, she has ambidextrous, um, escalation range. Uh, sure the same as melee, except it's for ranged attacks. Um, so you move within in two within two zones to move up to where she can actually shoot a zombie. Um, she does not have to move into a zone with a zombie. Uh, so sorry, move um, up to two zones, contain a zone with at least one zone. So she has to move into a, uh, a space with a zombie, but then she can do a ranged attack. But if you have a close range weapon, that's not a big deal. Um, ambidextrous is, uh, treats all weapons have the dual symbol, so you let her double up on weapons, and hit and run, of course, is really fun. Um, anytime she's in battle, if she defeats, uh, defeats at least one Xeno, she gets a free movement. So you can use this to either, oh, you didn't defeat all the Xenos, leave the area, try and flee back, then maybe use some of your ranged attacks, survive, keep you alive for another turn, um, or 
if you finished off the last one, you can use it to move closer to your objective or to another group of zombies. Um, so, yeah, so that's Yuko. I, yeah, so unfortunately, I didn't get the card in the set. I have, have it. I did talk to customer service about it, and they're going to get me one, but who knows how long that'll take because they're still probably shipping all these out. So, again, thanks for that plug and play. Uh, our French, French friend, um, shout out to him for that. All right, and then here's her miniature. Uh, so there she has her gun and her katana. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. Got a little bit of body armor on there. All right, now we can proceed with the normal um, grouping of people. We're going to look at Shyla. Or Shayla? Depending on how I guess you want to pronounce it. Um, so she is, I'm going to turn this a bit, got a little bit of a glare there. She is a civilian, so she only has two health. Uh, she starts with Unstoppable. Um, <clears throat> uh, survivors not spend extra actions where they perform move actions in a zone containing Xenos. Um, enter in a zone still in your turn. So basically she can just quickly escape if she needs to. Uh, right away in orange, that's pretty cool. She has Brother in Arms, plus one die for melee and Lucky. Lucky lets you reroll anytime you have to reroll dice. You can reroll all of them, but you have to accept any results. So if you roll four dice and you roll three misses, you might want to reroll them. Um, Brother in Arms uh, is a cool ability where uh, you gain that uh, the effect of whatever it is as long as there are other survivors in your zone. But all other survivors gain that as well. So as long as she's with other people, everyone gets plus one die for their melee. But that also means if she goes off on her own, she loses that skill entirely. Um, in red, she has Camouflage, Lifesaver, and Sprint. Sprint is going to let you uh, spend one action move two or three zones. Uh, so she can use Unstoppable to get out of the way of guys, but she can also then Sprint. Um, she can also Sprint to move extra. Um, Lifesaver is going to let her... Um, for free, such a zone can handle one Zeno and one survivor at range one. Um, both needs to have a clear path, kind of like a wall between you. Uh, she can pull that survivor out of that zone with the Zeno into her zone. So basically, you can pull someone out of harm's way. Um, I always find it interesting, though, they also put on here, survivor may decline this rescue and stay in selected zone if their controller chooses. So I always find it kind of interesting because I figure this is a co-op game. And once you be like, hey, I can pull you out of there. They're like, oh yeah, go ahead and do that. Instead of just being like, hey, for my action on this turn, I pull you out of that zone. And the guy's like, no, no, don't. I have a plan. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess it's one way to say it. They can always tell you no. But it feels like if they didn't say that, would you have just forced it? And then like, I don't care if you have a plan. You know, I'm pulling you out of there. You know, kind of interesting. Um, and then we have camouflage. Um... Uh, Survivor earns a camouflage token, so we get a little, uh, little token for her. Um, says, if no Zeno has a line of sight on them, place this token next to their base. Uh, the Survivor may keep this token even at the game round, uh, end of the game round, until they resolve any kind of combat or machine action or making noise. Um, and it may be earned again. As long as they have this token, the Survivor is ignored by all Zeno's to not be considered a noise token. Don't attack them, even move past them. Um... Even a camouflage token so I still has to spend extra actions to move all his own crowded Xenos. So this is kind of neat. So she's kind of able to like blend in with them. She can escape from them. She can get through them. Um, so she can kind of get right up in the thick and kind of just, you know, even if she needed to, she could be hanging out giving all her melee guys an extra die. And then like if they need to run, they can run. And she can kind of be hanging back like all the Xenos chase her and then chase the other guy. If they didn't kill him, and then she can keep walking through. This is pretty fun. Um, all right, and then there is her miniature. Let's take a look at that. Um, she's got her uh, interesting green like uh, cloak. She's got ooh, like a mechanical spine there. It's kind of cool. Um, bunch of bags and stuff. Um, so we're gonna do one thing. We're gonna jump right in and look at her. Because uh, we already spoiled it. Um, we're going to look at her abomination. Um, just because I want to kind of see what that looks like as well. So she'll get 
an abomination card, of course, and they're showing her transform, Shyla abomination. Um, and then she'll get her spawn card, so she'll have number 135 through number 140. So she gets six of those. Um, and of course, all, all abominations um, on board in activation. If you have her, if you have her in abomination spawn, if you don't, nothing happens. Um, and then she has on the back some special effects for her. So action, she has one action per turn. It deals three damage. To eliminate, it takes three damage. Experience provided is five. Special rule. When attacking, deal one damage to each survivor in the standing in the same zone. Uh, moves two zones per move. Um, yeah, she's kind of a beast. She's going to get a move a lot, a lot quicker. Which kind of goes with her regular card. She has a lot of movement abilities. Um, and then she's also going to deal an extra damage. And I'm guessing that's because she has all these extra tentacles. Um... This is kind of fun, because we had a bunch of different Xenos and all the other stuff, but they were all, like, just aliens coming out. So this is one where someone's actually, like, transforming. Um, but I also like how it's basically coming out of her back. Like, she's still there, and she's being taken over from the inside out. Um, instead of just, like, growing into a hulking brute. Um, like, it's growing off of her back, like, almost like she can control it, which is why you kind of do a play it, which is a neat little thing. I did wish they, it would kind of neat if they gave her a survivor card, um, that showed that, but that's pretty crazy. Even, like, this, where they've got, like, tentacle claws with more tentacles coming out of the claws, which is pretty crazy. All right, we'll look at the other abomination, um, at the end. I just wanted to show off her because we just looked at her stuff. Um, speaking of aliens, let's look at our next survivor. We have, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this anywhere where it's supposed to, but Kwa. Kwa? Kwa? Uh, but he's another civilian. He has um, plus one die for ranged attacks. Um, so he's going to, let's say, maybe, maybe a ranged or kind of a stay back guy. Um, in orange he has search two cards he gets to search a little bit more which is always nice he gets struck two cards when he does that or he has sniper to go good with his plus dot die um and of course sniper says may freely choose targets while the ranged actions friendly fire is ignored otherwise usually if you do friendly uh you shoot somewhere you have to hit in priority order which is usually the biggest guys abominations um first followed by tanks abomination and tanks are bigger then the slower workers, um, the regular small characters, and then the um, hunters, the little faster guys are last. But now he can opt to take out whoever he needs to take out first. So if he's not shooting hard enough to take out a um, abomination or a tank, he can shoot one of the smaller guys instead. And does not have to worry about misses. Um, in red, he has auto repair, full auto, and medic. Ooh, that's a fun set of skills there. Um, too bad you gotta wait till red for it, right? Um, so, Medic is going to let him heal, guys. Um, I'm looking for the exact phrasing for it. Uh, use, during free, during each end phase, the survivor, and all the survivors standing in the same zone may restore one armor up to their base level. So, that's kind of cool, because it's not even action. He just, at the end of the turn, he heals himself and everybody one point. Um... I mean, obviously, you take two or three points, but then again, most of you guys only have two hit points, so they can't afford to take two actions or two hits. Uh, full auto. When resolving ranged action, survivor may substitute the number of dice of the ranged weapon they're using with the number of Xenos standing in the area. Um, and then any pluses still apply. So this is really fun, too, because if he had, he had um, a ranged weapon that rolled two dice, but he's attacking an area that had five Xenos, he just rolled five dice. But because of his blue steel, he always gets to roll that extra six dice anyhow. Um, so that's actually a pretty fun combination there. And then the last one is auto repair. During each tank bay, restore the sur survivor's armor to its base level. So basically, if he's off by himself, hanging out in the back somewhere, you always give him auto repair. He can repair himself. Um, if he's not really worried about getting hurt, go full auto and keep attacking um, or if maybe that's more of a concern, there's too many guys and it's more worried about that. Um, or you can have him hang out with everybody else and be a medic. Um, which, you know, that search ability would be helpful for that as well. Because then he can find extra cards, bring them to other people, heal them while tra trading, uh, uh, 
trading equipment with them, which would be really cool. Um, yeah, so it's a really neat little kind of supportive character. Um, and there he is in his uh, glory, got pockets upon pockets. Um, yeah, very interesting looking character. Um, I don't know if there's somewhere where they specify like what race or anything he is, but I do love that they have aliens in this game. All right. Um, up next, we have a new soldier. Um, we have Sergeant Raj Gripping, um, who definitely looks like a heavy, heavy metal guy. Um, I like that, you know, uh, surprised they don't have more of these guys with like, the armor they had in the original ones. Uh, but he starts, of course, he's a soldier, has three health. He starts with Sniper, so he can just shoot in whatever he wants. Um, in orange, he has Enhanced Senses and Scavenger. Uh, for Enhanced Senses, Spyber can trace uh, lying one zone further in room zones. He also ignores dark rules when tracing lines of sight. Um, so that's actually good. So won't worry about that. Won't hurt or help you in this this campaign mode or this uh, quest mode because there's no it's dark. But play the other ones, it'll help. Um, but yeah, they'll just shoot an extra space into a building and sniping. Because he can kind of stand out a little bit farther and shoot like farther and take some guys out. Um, which is really cool. And scavenger you may search any room or corridor zone. Basic search rooms apply. Um, no search in mold zones or zones of Xenos, though. Uh, this helps him so he doesn't have to specifically find a treasure room to search, um, which helps him again. Kind of like our last guy will help him find equipment quicker. Um, and then Red he has plus one damage for combat. Extra damage is always welcome. Plus one free range action or unstoppable. So if he needs to get out of the way. Um, also interesting to note on this character, um, is actually the miniature. We'll look at this, take, get him to focus up here. There it is. Big old giant gun, um, big backpack with a mace in there. So he's ready for whatever it needs to be for. Um, no, it's always interesting because I always look at the base numbers on the miniatures at the bottom. So he's number 85, um, which... Going through all the original Kickstarter stuff, um, and all the expansions through, um, Regular Invader, Black Ops, um, Dark Side, all the game packs, all that, um, there were, like, four numbers of miniatures we were missing, and one of them was number 85. So it's interesting, because it's almost, that means he was almost designed to be in the original campaign, and then... For whatever reason, he got missed. Maybe he was a stretch goal that they we just they just didn't reach, um, or maybe they had some issue tweaking his design or something. Um, but he got pulled out, and then now he's finally showing up in this, um, which means he also didn't show up in Comic Book Volume One, which is also interesting because that would have came out after the original game in this. So that's kind of interesting to find out. I I wish. Wish I had a way of talking to people from like CMA and stuff to find out some of those interesting things. All right, our last survivor is Cassian Lloyd, um, or Lloyd if we uh, know Ninjago. Um, all right, so he's also another um, soldier. He has a dual expert. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Survivor has free combat action as long as they have dual weapons equipped. This action may be used with dual weapons equipped. So, at the beginning of the game, this might not be very helpful, but if he can get two weapons, he gets a free action, uh, but he has to use double wielding with them. But, right away when he hits orange, he gets Blade Master and Boring Leader. Blade Master um, says, treat all melee weapons as if they had the dual symbol. So, if he can survive till orange, I'll say now carries any two melee weapons, he can dual wield them and gain the, uh, even if they're not, they have to be the same weapon yet, but he can make anything in the dual wielding. Um, and then he has Born Leader, which we saw, um, or sorry, no, we did not see this. We saw Tactician. Born Leader says, may give one free action to the survivor, he uses please, the action immediate, and then the Born Leader resumes their turn. So, I do like this, ver I, 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 tiny, because this version lets you, of uh, zombie side, lets you just automatically force someone to do something. So, like, maybe they ended their turn next to a door and they didn't have enough actions to open it, or they're next to a, 
um, objective and they just couldn't activate it. Um, this will definitely let him, hey, you go ahead and open that door, activate this thing so we can see what it is, and then I know which way I can go afterwards. Um, so that's really fun. Um, in red, he has brothers in arm, plus one die for combat, so I'll help out anybody who's with them. Predator and Shove. Shove will let him push, um, any zombies in his zone out of the way into an adjacent zone. Um... Uh, I, oh, it's shove. I was looking for push. Push, sorry, push is a di same ability. It's just called different in a different game. Um, but it's a free skill you can use, but yeah. Um, yeah, you can push all the, all the zombies out of your way, which is also good for maybe setting up traps, maybe pushing them into a range where everyone's together where you can throw like a grenade at them and take them all out, um, or push them closer to maybe a survivor on the other side, or smaller group into a bigger group let someone use their escalation um abilities um pretty cool then he has predators his last one resolving a melee attack the survivor may substitute the dice number of the melee weapons they use the number of xenos so we saw this with full auto for guns this is basically the same thing but for melee so again if he has a sword that does two dice and he has five xenos he can roll five dice instead um plus a dual expert that can be really powerful um, awesome. So that was our last survivor there. And there he is in his glory. If you want to focus him up, he's got a big katana. He's got a little, uh, it, it looks like a, it is a pistol, but it almost looks like a, a chain pistol. If you look at from this side, it'd be kind of cool. He's a big, uh, cybernetic thing on the side of his head. Um, he kind of reminds me of almost looking like a, uh, um, like a World War Two guy, like maybe it's like, oh, I'm really into World War II. Um, Alright, then we have a bot. We love getting bots in this game. The more the merrier, more different options. We have the APE002 Serb. Um, so I'll back this up just a sec. So bot prototype, low profile, tough. When activated, gains lifesaver once per player's phase. Um... Yeah, so this is really cool. So he gets to uh, low profile, means he cannot be hit by friendly fire. Um, Hellfire still applies, but he ignores him when shooting if he's only. So he can be in an area and not worry about getting hit. People miss. He gains the lifesaver, which will let him um, pull someone out. So you can kind of send him in. Doesn't have to worry about taking damage from other people's shots. Um, and just to pull them out. He also has. Um, Tough, which will let him ignore the first damage they receive, um, and during friendly fire, which he doesn't have to worry about. Um, and then the bot and prototype just link to various other abilities. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, then he has a melee attack of zero, uh, with two, uh, dice for three accuracy, which does one damage. Uh, so basically his job is going to be, like, get in, do some stuff, and then, like, pull guys out of the fire and then leave. Um, so his move, melee actions, he uses his weapon. Note, the AP-02 serve may free, freely move alongside his controller surviving if they don't use movement skills. Um, yeah, so he can walk around with you as long as they're there. And then let's take a look at him. Um, kind of looks like an ape. Big, long, longish arms. He's got some little hunchback there. But yeah, he's definitely cool. I might have to someday just do like a video just showing off like all the bots together. Because they're kind of neat. So they're gone from like six, seven different sets now. Um, also just to show off, there he is in comparison to a human uh, character. So he's yeah, a little bit bigger, definitely. Um, so that's pretty cool. Alright, then our last miniature, our last character, I guess, is the last abomination. So we have... The Game Butcher. Uh, which this guy looks pretty nasty. Um, which most of the abominations do. So this is cards number 141. And he has six of them that go up through 146. So you got his six spawn cards. 
Same thing with all of them. I'll activate all abominations. All abominations get one extra activation if you have him spying. If you don't, nothing happens. Um, and then we have his backside. He has one action, deals three damage. To eliminate three damage, provides five experience. So typical abomination stuff. Uh, special rules. Attacks on Dim Butcher Abomination Zone suffer minus one to die results. Dim Butcher's Abomination is immune to Hellfire and Meteor Sentry Guns, so you can't use the ultimate weapons to take him out. Um, you have to do it the old-fashioned way. Um, so that's actually pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah, kind of cool. Um, So, uh, let's see, let's see, sorry, um, I got lost in a train of thought there. Here, ah, uh, so here he is. Oh, look at this guy. Got the big squiddy tentacles coming out the back. So I'm guessing this is probably, like, maybe storyline-wise, and this is a guy, I guess, um, is I wonder if he's, like, the guy that may be infected, uh, Shyla, and that's why I even love this. Where they come down his tentacles into his arm, like making his arm, but then they like wrap around into the three things and make three separate little claws. Like that is pretty crazy. Um, he's got it, like this side's more of just like a hand. He's got a tentacle coming out of that hand too. Uh, he's nasty. Um, and then yeah, even if you compare some of these, I love comparing these guys, right? Look how big he is. That's pretty funny. Even like compared to her, he's pretty, pretty much bigger. Um, so that's really fun. Um, no, sorry, I was lost before because so I was trying to figure this out. Um, so I just want to look at this really quick. Um, immediately spawn the Dim Butcher in the green spawn zone. Um, if not eliminated by the Shadow Abomination's angry attack, the Dim Butcher Abomination returns to the board. Um, so yeah, I was trying to figure this out because her attack... She rolls, okay, because she rolls four dice. So, yeah, I guess she can. If each die does two damage, um, she could defeat him if the damage adds up. Um, which I was trying to remember if it did. If the damage adds up, then yeah. If not, if, like, it's two, 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 like, for one for each die, there's no way she can beat him without a boost. So then you basically almost have to use someone like Cassian Lang, uh, Cassian Lloyd with his plus one die for combat, giving her an extra combat die. Um, or we had Brother in Arm plus one. That's her card, so she can't even do that. Um, yeah, interesting, because I don't think she says she can no longer use equipment. She has no armor points if she takes damage. She just loses one of the things. Um, and she no longer has her survivor skills. So, yeah, we only have one other guy that can boost her up. So, that'd be interesting to see how that works. Um, all right. Anywho, that is what we have for comic book extras, zombie side, invader. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have questions, comments, hit me up in there. I'd love to hear from you. See you guys later. Bye. Oh, wait, before we go, one last thing. Um, we have, and, and just in case you haven't, if you don't, if you think you might not check it out, um, we'll be doing another video for Android Netrunner, um, which is not zombie side at all, except they have miniatures there for the zombie side invaders. So if you want to see more, definitely check out that. I will put a link in the description for that video as well, since it's related to this. All right, see you guys later. Bye.